So you've just finished Ree's Royal Love in the Palace. It was a beautiful, heartbreaking tale of misguided love and the futile nature of palace life, and you could not be more depressed. If you're anything like me, you might even have sworn off harem dramas for some time and promised yourself never again to watch 80 hours of a woman being emotionally pummeled into the dirt. And then in comes Ying Luo, as if in answer to your harem prayers, a protagonist who differs from Ri in just about every way. Tolerance, quiet suffering, as if. If you even think about crossing Ying Luo, just know that your days are numbered. She takes no shit and she takes no prisoners. Yinshi Palace and Ri's Royal Love are about the exact same emperor and time period. The transition here is easy. All you have to think is what if Ri's story was actually told by Yen Wan? Manipulative and calculating? No, clever and resourceful cold and heartless, she did what she had to do to survive. With a change in perspective, the world and characters take on a completely new light. Was the first empress really the villain Ri made her out to be, or did we watch a biased account from a pretend saint who in reality was just as evil as the rest? What about Hui, Chun, the emperor? Was creepy eunuch even really creepy? Well, no, that part was actually pretty consistent. In any case, it's time to hear Ying Luo's version of events. Just remember, everyone is the hero in their own story. Till next time, thanks for watching.